I look forward to our discussions tonight. I'm happy to introduce Father Mark Bosco, our first speaker. Thank you, Terrence. Uh, and it's really a pleasure to be with everybody here at Collegium and, and a pleasure to be with Cecilia, Stephanie, and Nick uh, in this uh, wonderfully titled um, panel on writing between cultures. Uh, I say that because I'm very interested myself in the way that um, this Catholic aesthetic, this literary aesthetic, this artistic kind of encounter and engagement uh, in many ways can be traced as a kind of a, a global transnational movement. You might say that in the 20th century, at least it was Dostoevsky landing in, in, the, in the intellectual life of Catholics in France, trying to figure out how to be Catholic and modern at the same time with Bernanos and, and uh, Moriac and, and Blois and so many others. And then kind of migrating across the waters to England uh, 20 or 30 years later um, to Great Britain with Evelyn Waugh and, and Graham Greene and Muriel Spark. Uh, go, taking a, an airplane to the United States with a kind of renaissance going on in the 50s and 60s between Thomas Merton and Flannery O'Connor. But in, in the midst of that, you have Shisako Endo, who I'm gonna talk about tonight. Uh, who in some ways, um, we, there is no Catholic Shisako Endo without that, uh, that, that sense that he was part of a narrative, part of an aesthetic theological imagination uh, that he needed to grapple with. And it happened mostly in his time in France, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So what I want to say basically is that I believe that, um, that, basic, this, that, that the aesthetics of Catholicism, its theological underpinnings, as well as the, the way that we dramatize uh, some of the issues in a very modern way in the last, say, 100 years, um, is, is absolutely essential in how we talk about these artists. Endo is a, you know, if you go to, uh, to the archives of Graham Greene in Boston College, there's a wonderful letter that, uh, of, of Endo writing green and green saying, your book, Silence, was so much better than my, my book, The Power and the Glory, which I think, you know, we can contest that. But I do think it's very interesting that they're, they're already talking and in, in communicating. Matter of fact, uh, Endo, uh, Shosako Endo's wife said, uh, you know, there would be no Endo writing if it hadn't been for his being inspired by those like Graham Greene. I think it's important to remember, though, that Endo, uh, J Japan is, is, you know, it's not a Catholic country. Obviously, it's got this history of pa Catholic persecution that comes out, of course, in silence most uh, vividly in that story or in that film uh, by Scorsese. Um, but there was this kind of small Catholic community uh, when, when Endo uh, was in college. And he went to a small little kind of Catholic dormitory whose, um, whose you know, dorm master, had studied with Jacques Maritain in Paris. So this idea that somehow France and, uh, and a French Catholic kind of aesthetic was so important to Endo's uh, formation and shape. And so he's dealing with both its European Catholicism and his own culture. So he, he admires Green, he admires Bernanos, he admires Mauriac, he wants to write his, his uh, thesis while he's in Lyon in 1950 on them. He gets tuberculosis, and he feels like an outsider both in Paris or France and Lyon um, for being kind of the Japanese uh, individual, the, the, the side that lost the war uh, uh, in, in World War II, um, and that his Catholicism didn't make him feel like he fit in even there because of his Japanese identity. Um, uh, and so, of course, being in Japan, he always felt being marginalized and feeling the other uh, because it, Catholicism was such a, uh, a limited um, uh, population of people. So what does he, what does he learn? And what, what becomes the kind of the trace, you might say, the DNA of a Catholic literary aesthetic that, that he's gonna grapple with? What, what the French, I think, did through Dostoevsky and through so many others was kind of get to these key kind of elements. And the first one is that wonderful line from Charles Pegui, that the sinner is at the heart of Christianity, that the story, the, the modern story of faith is about looking at sinners uh, and their salvation, their dramas, not of good people, not of saved people, but those who are kind of in between, those people who are on the edge, those who are in places of transgression. So this is what, this is obviously what the French writer, this is what Graham Greene writes about. Endo is gonna pick this up and he's, he's gonna use that kind of uh, moment as well. Certainly existential kind of spiritual hounding, uh, the characters uh, in, in all of, 
all of the French, British, and American. There's a sense that, you know, I think Flannery O'Connor, um, you know, Hazel Moats being hounded uh, by, this, the, the, by this god. Um, Graham Greene's whiskey priest being hounded by this god. Well, in some ways, if you read uh, through Shusako Endo's Catholicism, there is a sense that he can't quite take off. He talks about that, that ill-fitting suit. He can't quite take off the suit of this faith, this Catholic faith. But um, he feels like there's something kind of that he has to grapple with, a hounding, that somehow he has to deal with the darkness and the uh, imperfections of, of one's life. Uh, and so his characters are often these very, again, mixed uh, bags of people with good intentions, but these uh, moments of pride, vanity, uh, and confusion uh, in the cultural world. And I also think that what we learn in this, this kind of aesthetic is a kind of clash between the, what you might call the bourgeois formalities of faith uh, and you know beliefs very countercultural commitments and so there's this, this sense of not fitting in um, of trying to deepen the complexities of what is maybe a superficial religion or a superficial kind of devotion kind of getting in between those things a clash between that there's something more than a kind of commodified commercialized religion but finally and I think this is most important to um, to how Endo tries to deal with his Japanese self and his Christian or Catholic self. And it's this idea of, of, of kenosis, um, this theological word, this Greek word of self-emptying, kind of a self-emptying gesture. Sometimes it's kind of, I think, overly played as this kind of, uh, kind of uh, a spiritual selflessness, an emptying of the self where there's nothing there. Of course, for the Catholic theological imagination, kenosis is generative, right? I... I give myself over to something and, and in, in, in giving myself over to of emptying myself of my pride or of my talent or my gifts, whatever it might be, something has generated. Uh, and that generation, of course, is that I participate in the life of Christ. So we have this kind of suffering servant kind of kenosis. We have, of course, Christ as kenosis. And we have these characters who are going to, they would give up them, the, their, their lives for the sake of something greater. It seems to me that what Endo has tried to do is in all of his stories, uh, but certainly if you take Silence and Deep River, the two kind of the bookends of his work, the, certainly the samurais in there as well, there is this kind of negotiation of these four things, uh, a kind of a sense of how do I wrestle with Christianity in a Japanese context? I'm going to do it by using the, the drama, the dramatic um, uh, ways in which um, Christianity uh, has been kind of reimagined as, as a modernist kind of moment. Re how do we be modern in the 20th century? So, um, just looking at my time, doing okay, I think. Uh, I think Endo's Catholicism then is kind of offered him this a discourse on how to think about religious pluralism. He's not, in silence, as he looks at these historical markers, he, this is again done early uh, in the 1960s, it's done, it, it, Vatican II has not kind of even taken hold, it was just ending. And there was a sense of him just trying to figure out how can one have interreligious dialogue? How can, how can two religious cultures penetrate one another? How can you have one or two identities? I think that's what he's doing in all of his stories. And I think all of his stories have this lifelong journey uh, of to explore what you might what he calls the confrontation of his Catholic self uh, with what is that, un that self underneath. Um, I think it comes to fruition in Deep River. A lot of folks think that uh, Endo's so transgressive with some of these, these doctrinal moments or these kinds of assumptions that he kind of, he's lost his faith. I'm, I'm not quite sure uh, where they get that. If, in close readings, show a man, show an author, an artist whose imagination is fully engaged with the intellectual life of his faith, feeling its difference and feeling its complexities. So I think to maybe to sum up, because I know I'm, I am running out of time now, uh, I think when you look at Endo and the way that, you know, this kind of cross-cultural, he goes to France, he learns something, uh, he, he studies it, he's gonna write his thesis on this kind of French Catholic way of being modern, uh, uh, that Catholicism is a way to be modern, and he tries to appropriate that and tries to, and tries to get on the inside of that from a Japanese perspective. So much so that I think that Endo, as a good Catholic, you might say, um, is not looking for some kind of philosophical or theological stance that kind of transcends the East and the West. But I think he's trying to suggest an encounter 
with each tradition kind of penetrating the mystery of the other, uh, a kind of looking for the spiritual analogies of kenosis played out in, in his stories, of a way of, of, of a gesture of, of, of humility uh, in the face of that. So I, I think with that in mind, you can say that kenosis, um, a sense of the sinner at the heart of Christianity, uh, an encounter uh, with the person of Christ, the encounter with an insight about this Christian moment is, is, is always present in his novels. So um, I'll stop with that. I think uh, I, I'm done. And uh, so read a lot of Endo. I'm going to now introduce for us.